Your mission, should you choose to accept, is to go to a New York City grocery store and return with provisions. This message will self-destruct in three, two, one. I used to think grocery shopping in the city required a certain kind of grit. Danger zone! But in reality, all you really need is to have a method. In this video, I am going to set you up for success by giving you methods and tips on how to successfully survive the grocery store. This is your typical grocery store layout in the United States. Refrigerated and perishables are on the outskirts. The dry and non-perishables are in the middle. However, this is your typical grocery layout. You are going to a New York City grocery store. Large city grocery stores like New York City will tend to be either single or multi-level. Many of these have a few things in common. One is that there's the tendency of the aisles to be very narrow. And two is the line situation. These places have been operating these grocery stores for years and years and they've cracked the code. They know how to handle the line. Whenever somebody visits me to New York and it's their first time, I always take them to the grocery store. I always take them to Trader Joe's. Or I tell somebody if it's their first time in New York, just go to a Trader Joe's, just buy anything and get in line. Grocery shopping here is an experience in of itself. So here's how you do it. When you get in, immediately assess the line. Is it gonna be a short line or a long one? The typical NYC line at a grocery store is usually set up to have one or two lines and you get distributed once you get to the register area. There will either be a person or a caller telling you which register to go to or there will be a notification sign. It's similar to the DMV or any other government office where you're waiting and there are windows and you know it's your turn because you hear this. Window number eight. Except at a grocery store, it's going to be more like this. Register number five. If the line gets too long, it will start to sneak through the grocery store in between the aisles. The trick here is to grab what you need quickly in the areas that the line has not yet invaded. Then step into the line. The line actually goes pretty fast, and as the line moves through the aisles, do your shopping along the way. At a place like Trader Joe's, there'll be somebody holding up a sign at the end of the line and the sign will read at the end of the line and that person will be putting people in line literally and figuratively <laughs> now let's talk about portability if you don't have a backpack a wagon a car or a packing mule and all you have are your two strong arms then listen to what i have to say Come with me if you want to leave. This is your typical grocery basket. Its volume holds exactly two grocery bags, one for each arm. It's important to use a grocery basket because this is your limit marker on how much you can carry to make your trip as comfortable as possible on your commute. If you put more than you can fit into this grocery basket, you're gonna have to figure out how to carry more than two grocery bags. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a third arm. Maybe you're stronger than I am, so you can carry two in each hand. The trick is that you have to be balanced, so you're not lopsided. If you have a hard time carrying this basket because it's too heavy, I guarantee you, you're gonna have a hard time taking this home. Unless you have that packing mule, of course. Now here are three more tips to consider. If you are near a grocery store, consider micro-shopping. Some market researchers define micro-shopping as spending less than five minutes in a grocery store. I loosely define micro-shopping as getting enough food to last you three days, maybe four days, and going back to the grocery store twice a week. It might be preferable to divide up grocery shopping between online shopping and in-person shopping. I usually get heavy and non-perishable items from Target or Amazon, whoever has the best price on those items. And prices fluctuate. You learn to be this price ninja. Are you? And if you are able to, I recommend the Target Red Card, which gives you 5% off on your purchase, or the Amazon Credit Card, that gives you 3-5% to cash back depending on whether you are a Prime member or not. For the perishable and refrigerated items, I would get that in person at my grocery store. 
And I tend to limit just one liquid item, one or two liquid items at a time, just because liquid's just too heavy. So if I get a jug of milk, I'm not gonna get a jug of orange juice. That's just, that's not happening. It could happen for some people, but not for me. Consider wheels. I see a lot of people with these rolling baskets. It's not just in the grocery store. I've seen them in the subway, park. Lately, I've been grocery shopping in my neighborhood, which is a few blocks from home, so I don't have to take the subway. Because of this, I take a big wagon with me. However, months ago, my grocery store would allow people to use their own carts and baskets. But lately, they've changed that rule, so I can't take the wagon with me. And it's not like there's parking space for wagons in New York City. So what I do is I hide my wagon behind their ATM machine <laughs> right before I go inside. And then as I leave, I bring it out and ta-da! I have transportation for my groceries. So there you have it, my survival guide on how to grocery shop in the Big Apple. I hope you find this video useful. Please check out my channel for more information about New York City or just urban life in general. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. I would love to hear from you. And it would mean so much to me if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel. Till next time, thank you for watching and happy grocery shopping. Ha ha ha!